best news that I have, Paul, is that on the 22nd of November, Tor is going to take delivery of its first parcel of indigenous crude. We've bought a million barrels, well, Bost has bought a million barrels of 10 crude from uh, the, the second FPSO at Mills. It's going to come in here and we are going to refine products and we are going to sell to the Ghanaian market. Now, why this is very exciting is because this is the vision of the founding father of the country. And if you read the speech Kwame Nkrumah delivered, he was so visionary. He was able to say that, and one day... But he, did, he didn't know that we'll have oil. He said, and one day, when Ghana has its own crude oil, it will be brought to this refinery and it will be refined here. Oh, he said that? He did say that in his, in his inauguration speech. And that is going to happen this November. Mm, I see. After a long time, though. After a long time. But that is what vision is about. And what I always keep telling people is that visionaries have one major challenge. But, but let me get it clear. I, I need to make this point, Paul. Mm. Visionaries have one major challenge. They live in tomorrow. So they think ahead for people. And unfortunately for them, most of us live in today. And this is where we let our visionary leaders down and we're not able to stay the course with them. And our development as a country has been cut back. And I think for, the, for, a, 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 for a long time now, we also have a very visionary president, His Excellency President Mahama, who has made massive infrastructure investments for the future of this country because he's looking at tomorrow. We'll talk about infrastructure because some people say that if people are poor, infrastructure means nothing to them. We'll come to that. We'll come to so that. the point, you are, the achievements that you talked about is that Tor is buying crude oil from the 10 fields in Ghana. Correct. And refine it in Ghana. So they Correct. are not going to export it and, and then we go and buy refined products. Yes. We are, we are starting that on the 22nd of November, you said? Yes. We have in 2016. 2016. Okay. Um, it's actually uh, in the MPP manifesto, but unfortunately for them, we've already achieved it. Oh, it's in their manifesto? <laughs> it's in their manifesto to process indigenous crude. But His Excellency President Mahama is already doing that. All what you are saying is well and good. Uh, here's the, the catch. So the MPP say that they also did infrastructure and they put money in the people's pocket. They obtained a hippic uh, forgiveness and they put money in the people's pocket. You are doing infrastructure, they are accusing you that you are not putting money in the people's pocket in spite of all the loans. Paul, you've asked a very good question. And I've studied this at great length because I actually came into politics to make a difference. The economic miracle of the eight years of NPP could not sustain itself. That means it was an inflated one. And I'll give you an example. HIPIC brought in a lot of money into the country because we didn't have to spend money servicing debts. The HIPIC money that came into the country was treated in one fundamental, uh, with one fundamental mistake. The money was not invested into infrastructure or into the productive side of the economy. The money was invested in the consumption side of the economy. So there was a false wealth that was created. And I'll explain it to you. You had a situation where the economy was moved from 11 billion to 40 billion. Mm -hmm. But it was done without any factories. It was done without any agricultural base. It was done based on imports. So what happened was there was a lot of money in the system. Credit was loose and cheap. So Ghanaians were importing everything. So you could get a loan to buy a fridge, you could get a loan to buy a deep freezer, and it gave people a false sense of prosperity. So when the money ran out, you had gone from an 11 billion CD economy to a 40 billion CD economy, which was based on imports. So guess what? The currency started falling. And one of the things that a lot of uh, 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 voters, one of the mistakes a lot of voters make is that the decisions of a political party necessarily happen after a certain period of time. So a decision that was made in 2000, you would start seeing the effects of that decision in 2007, 2008. Because if all that, if even 20 billion of that uh, 30 billion addition to the economy had been put into roads, had been put into factories. But they, but they did, they did eight interchanges. Accra Kumasi Road. Paul, they didn't finish them. But eight interchanges. They did not lot. finish them. And they say they did hippic schools, the schools that they wrote, hippic schools. <sighs> Those were not new schools. Those Cocoa were, production rose up to a million tons. Cocoa production is up to today. 
we still have cocoa production at a very high level. Now, you see, the other thing about cocoa production is that the growth doesn't happen. You don't plant cocoa on Monday, and 12 months later, you harvest cocoa at a high level. So you look at the, the seedlings that we are distributing as a party within the cocoa growing areas. His Excellency, the President just announced last week, cut your old cocoa trees down and plant new cocoa trees. And by the way, we are giving them to you free. It's going to take three years for those cocoa trees to start bearing fruit, mm. the new ones. And it's only after five years that they'll start optimizing. So somebody will come into power uh, five years from now and try to take credit for something that President Mahama So you think did. the blew the hippie opportunity? They blew it. Because on bad policies? On, on bad policies. Because it was a false economy. Now, if it's a real economy, it will sustain itself. That's the difference. Because you can't fool the market. If the incomes that people were earning were real, based on production, not based on imports, because any time you import, you export jobs. So the minute you now have a big job problem is because um, from 2000 to 2008, we're not able to use the revenues that accrue to the country in the form of HIPIC on creating jobs. Okay, but they handed over to you a lighted country and the buoy dam. And uh, we're just coming from a very devastating <laughs> Doomsaw situation. We don't even know whether we're actually out. Well, I think Doomsaw is over. The president said he'll fix it. He has fixed it. But the Bui Dam, and I'm going to be very blunt here, I'm sorry, but the NDC has not been honest to Ghanaians about the impact of the Bui Dam. And it's very simple. In a rule of thumb, one million dollars is equal to one megawatt. So anytime you make an investment of a million dollars, you should be able to add one megawatt generation capacity to the country. Mm -hmm. Bui Dam cost us $600 million. Mm -hmm. It has an installed capacity of about 290 to 300 megawatts. But available capacity is less than 100 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So that single policy cost the country, you and I, taxpayers' money, $600 million, and it only gives us 90 megawatts because the engineering was bad. The reservoir behind the Bui Dam, which is the water that is able to accumulate, is a very small reservoir. Unlike Akosombo, which stretches from Akosombo, which is the southern part of the country, all the way up to Burkina Faso, which is a very large reservoir, Bui is a really small reservoir, which means that you can only run it for peaking periods which is in the evening, and you can only generate 90 megawatts. Now you imagine that that $600 million had been used to invest into thermal plants. We would have 600 megawatts. There would be no need for emergency power today. So an opportunity that we had between 2000 and 2008 was squandered. And poor President Mahama, being the gentleman that he is, says, I will take responsibility for it. The reality that Ghanaians need to know is the seeds of this current power crisis is the, wrong, is the result of wrong investment and underinvestment into the power sector between 2000 and 2008. But it's okay, we fixed it. And we'll continue to improve the country for the benefit of the people of Ghana. Will this be a more difficult election than 2012? <laughs> well, that's the easiest question you've asked me. <laughs> Would it be a more difficult election? My honest analysis mm -hmm. and I am a very, very strong believer in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. It has never failed. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I don't even spend my time and effort worrying about the outcome of the 2016 elections is found in Mark chapter 3, verse 25. The Gospel of Mark? Yes. Chapter 3, verse 25. Verse 25. What does it say? <laughs> it says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. This is the word of God. It's not my word. Which house is the, who is divided against what? I'll leave that to the people of Ghana. But any house or any political party that is divided, according to the word of God, cannot stand. Is the NDC not divided? Okay. I am going to leave that to you and your public to decide mm. which po political party in Ghana today. Mark chapter what? 3 verse 25. Hmm. A house divided itself against itself. A house divided against itself cannot stand. In other words, a, a house divided win. against itself cannot win election. It cannot stand. And if you cannot stand, you cannot fight. And if you cannot fight, you cannot win. <laughs> hmm. But the crowds are similar. 
Paul. And Akufado is pulling some of the amazing crowds, Paul. even in the Volta region. Paul, so Mahama is also pulling the, the crowds. Truth, the truth of the matter is that the two main parties in this country, and I'll say the NPP is a large party, mm -hmm. so they will get crowds, but they cannot cross the 50 plus one. Will you cross? Easily.